Greetings, 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 royal family. Welcome back to another episode of the Morning Boogie Morning Show. All right, it's Thursday, it's June 10th, the year is still 2021, and I'm happy to be alive this morning. Okay, so thanks for clicking on the video. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Right, we took a little bit of a break yesterday, but it's all good. We are back. We are back. So, of course, you know, social media never takes a break. The shenanigans never take a break. So, we got a packed lineup today. Okay, we're going to be getting into Pooh Shiesty. That's not my dog at all. Uh, Pooh Shiesty got himself into some legal trouble. And, excuse me, he recently had his court hearing. So, we're going to get into that uh, briefly. We're going to talk about that. Tyler Perry, <sighs> this guy, this guy is like, like a roach, you know, they just don't go anywhere, they're gonna stand the test of time, nuclear war, bomb, they're gonna stand the test of time, I'm not mad at it, season three of uh, Sisters premiered last night, did you guys get to watch it? I did, and that review will be up later, so make sure you check. come back to the channel and check it out. Can you believe three seasons in to Tyler Perry's sister? <sighs> what you got going on up there, BET Tyler Perry? Anyway, and also Azalea Banks, right? She's another one who always seems to be in the media for some drama. She has some choice words uh, for Nicki Minaj and for uh, Megan Thee Stallion, I think. She's just going off. I think she's just trying to keep herself relevant. Some things that she says, I don't disagree with. And then other things, it's like, it's just surrounded by hype and fluff and semantics and antics and, and the like. So that's some of the hot topics that I'm gonna get into today. But again, we got a packed, packed lineup. So if you are the YouTube Royals, all right, and you're watching this, pre-recorded video please pay your admission fee by hitting that like button a little thumbs up button click that that's your admission fee that's it that's all you can also share the video to your social media platforms i definitely don't mind all right and if you are viewing on twitch you are getting this live and in living color all right shout out to my twitch family okay she underscore royal b on everything twitch twitter uh, Instagram, all that. We try to keep it uniform across all platforms, right? Keep it professional. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so get comfortable. Without further ado, let's start out with some interesting news. You know, we're going to get into the, we're going to build the momentum over here. We're going to get into the mess in the middle and toward the tail end of the show. But in some world news, all right, this is according to the New York Post, a South African woman claims that she gave birth to record 10 babies at once. Why? Okay. Why? This is according to the New York Post. This is her lovely photo. I like rose golds and pinks and, you know, colors like that. So this is this is a cute little color scheme here. 10 babies at once. <laughs> now, I do not know uh, how to put that. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Shame on me, I know. But for the sake of time, we're just going to call her African Queen, all right? Now, a South African woman was reported has reportedly given birth to 10 babies at once, smashing. <laughs> she sure did smash, right? A world record set just last month. So this African Queen, already a 37-year-old mom of she's 37 Ooh, of of six-year-old twins initially thought that she was going to have eight kids, becoming a rare octomom like California, whatever, whatever, uh, like Californian Nada Sulman. Y'all remember her, octomom? Anyway, but when she gave birth by cesarean section at a uh, hospital on Monday, she was surprised when 10 babies emerged. Her husband told the news, I, did he pass out? 10 babies it's seven boys and three girls this is what the um husband told the the outlet wow she was seven months and seven days pregnant when she had a cesarean the father says her husband says that i'm happy i'm emotional i can't talk much let's talk again in the morning please this is what the husband said the outlet that's because he is he's stressed out listen children are a beautiful blessing children are also expensive look at him he like help Send help, please. Ten babies? 
But if she went to go have a, uh, what do you call it, a um, ultrasound, some of them little babies could have been hiding and they may not have seen all of them. But God bless her. I'm glad that she was able to have a successful pregnancy um, because a lot of times there's a lot of women have complications, especially when you're up there in age. You know, 37 is not old, but it is considered older when you are pregnant um, and there's health concerns and all that good stuff. So all jokes aside, I am so happy to hear that she successfully gave birth to uh, these 10 children that she brought into the world. That household is going to be lit during the holidays. Okay. I'm not mad at it. So if confirmed, uh, the ladies 10 kid delivery would make it the first known birth of how you say this? De de couplets, de couplets, de couplets. Is it de couplets? I should ask my mama. That's my personal Google. My mother. Um, let's see what else. I'm just skimming through this. So she's gonna make the Guinness World Book, uh, uh, Guinness um, World Record of ha giving birth to the the most babies at one time. There's some other pictures here. My God, today, look at her. Woo, man! I know she did not have any energy. Them beautiful blessings sucking the life out of her, Lord. But she looks great though. God bless her. God bless you, queen. And hopefully everyone will uh, join together like they did for that octo mom who voluntarily had several children. Hopefully people will stick together and, you know, give the mother stuff like diapers and, and, and car seats and all that stuff like they did for that octo mom over there in California. A mess. Anyway, if you're just joining, welcome. Welcome to the Morning Boogie Morning Show. Please pay your admission fee by hitting that like button. I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but trust me, the likes help, and they cost you absolutely, positively nothing. And share up the video. Shout out to all of y'all who have been sharing the video to uh, Facebook. The only bad thing about the analytics is I can't see exactly who, like the behind the scenes, I can't exactly see, I can't see who is sharing the videos to Facebook, but I do know that, um, the content has been getting shares, uh, to Facebook. So that's a, a beautiful thing. All right. Up next, let me tell you something. When they say that people don't effed up the church's money, this is exactly who they talking about. Okay. What in the sister Mary Clarence is going on here? And it's so funny because Sister Act 2 is one of my favorite movies, okay? A lot of quotables in that movie. So I, when I first saw the headline, I said, what in the system? I said, Sister Mary Clarence would never. And look at what the Shade Room wrote in their caption. Before I read it, what in the Sister Mary Clarence is going on in California? <laughs> I thought that that was absolutely hilarious. So the caption reads, a nun who ran a Catholic elementary school would plead guilty to embezzling Embezzle, embezzling $835,000 to finance her gambling habit. Mm, mm, mm. Over $500,000 gambling, ma'am? Girl, who you owe money to? This is a shame and a scandal, a disgrace. So federal prosecutors filed charges um, yesterday, I think it was, against now retired 79-year-old Mary Margaret Krupa, who um, has agreed to plead guilty to fraud and money laundering charges for stealing more than $835,000 in school funds to pay for personal expenses, including her gambling trips. Krupa... Should we call her Sister Krupa? Or did y'all snatch? Did the Archdiocese already snatch her habit? Because Sister Mary Clarence would never. This is a disgrace. Ma'am, you're just going to have to take up your cross, okay? Your expensive cross, and you're going to have to carry it, all right? Don't lay down these burdens down by the riverside, because these are expensive burdens. And Jesus ain't got nothing to do with this, all right? So Kruper, who was the principal of an elementary school, 
uh, was charged Tuesday with one count of wire fraud and one count of money laundering, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Central District of California. Krupa, she agreed to plead guilty to the two charges that carry a maximum statutory penalty of 40 years in federal prison. Damn, sister! Mm. For... <laughs> For a period of 10 years, ending in September of 2018, Sister Krupa embezzled money from St. James Catholic School, according to prosecutors, um, as principal of the school for 28 years. Sister Krupa was responsible, of course, for the money that the school received to pay for tuition. Let me tell you something right now. Okay, this strikes a nerve. I went to Catholic school my entire life, okay? From the time I was in, well, not my entire life, from the time I was in kindergarten all the way up to senior year of high school, all right? And tuition is not cheap, all right? Let me tell you, my mother would have been up at that school with a whole bunch of questions. Not with her hard-earned money. Are you crazy? For those of you who are unaware, right, who if you, maybe you are aware, even if you didn't go to Catholic school, Catholic schools don't receive funding from the government, right? So they rely on donations. They rely on the parents paying their tuition on time. You get what I'm trying to say? The archdiocese don't play that. So you mean to tell me that the money that was supposed to be going toward the tuition, which includes teacher salaries, right? That's how they keep the lights on books and things like that that's why i don't i remember um myself going to catholic school you had everything required money we wanted to have pizza they selling pizza two dollars you wanted to dress down a dollar for the top a dollar for the bottom dress down because they're not getting money from the government per se to fund certain things like maybe a charter school or a public school would get right so they rely, like I said, they rely on donations, the tuition that the parents pay, you know, uh, any donations that the parents give. They have uh, lots and lots and lots of fundraisers, lots of fundraisers. You know, times may have changed. I don't think it has changed much because, again, the Catholic schools, they're not run by the government per se, right? They're run by the archdiocese, which is a completely separate entity from the state. It's supposed to be anyway, but you know how things work behind the scenes. But this struck a nerve with me. Let me tell you something. I could see my mother right now rolling her neck with her tight lip. So what are these parents? These parents should not be held accountable for not, quote unquote, paying tuition if they've actually paid the tuition. And sister Sticky Fingers over here wanted to take the money to fund her gambling habit. Ooh, child. Sister Mary Clarence would never do a thing like this. You know why? Because she's an honorable sister. OK, and she is busy down at the St. Francis trying to keep St. Francis from closing, which reminds me, I got choir practice tonight. Oh, shout out to those who went to Catholic school who had to wear those hot wool uniforms all year round. Yes, I'm a Catholic school kid. Can't you tell? <laughs> I'm such a rebel. But uh, uh, she's out of order. Lock her up and throw away the key, the Catholic key, that is. Ladies and gentlemen, the foolishness does not stop there, all right? So this, shout out to the Morning Juice Box on Instagram. Let me tell you something. I found this page a couple of months ago. I have no idea who runs this page. Doesn't even matter, right? But this IG page really gives me, let me not say that because some people say give me my life. No, this IG page really makes me cackle and laugh. Very entertaining, right? I don't know who runs the page. I just like giving props where props is due. It doesn't cost me anything. My ego is not big like that. So this is the morning juice morning juice box on Instagram. Some of you probably already know about this page. Maybe I'm late to the party, but I have been fond of this page for quite a few months. Anyway, so Jamal and his speaking of money management, Jamal and his poor money managing skills. So this dude won thirty thousand dollars right in the lottery thirty thousand dollars i don't know if that's before or after taxes okay probably after but he won thirty thousand dollars uh playing the lottery and he brought a chain he bought bought not brought but bought a chain 
for $20,000. So let me let your brain do the math in real quick. Uh-huh. Carry the one. Right. 1920. Right. So $30,000 in the lottery he won. Bought a chain for $20,000. Then Jamal got robbed. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you something. God is not playing with y'all. Y'all want to be stupid out here? He is going to spank you. Jamal won $30,000 on the Michigan lottery. Bought Hold himself on. a... Sorry, I was talking. Is their target. I hit the lottery. Jamal won $30,000 on the Michigan lottery. Bought himself a $20,000 necklace. You see, he's wearing it there. He's heard of people getting robbed for their jewelry. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. So I was just like, just looking around, making sure nobody ain't trying to get my chain. But... but they did get his chain. He walks out the store. The suspects were waiting. Oh! So I ran back, tried to get Jamal! back into the gas station. They had grabbed me, oh. tapping me down. A particularly vicious attack, punching him, kicking him, getting him to the ground, ripping off his gold. They took off running and jumped in their car and took off down Warren. The gas station owner said, is their target. I hit the lottery. Jamal won $30,000 on the... Is it me? Or does this look like a scene out of a Tyler Perry, uh, a poorly written Tyler Perry show? First of all, Jamal... You wasn't good with money anyway. As somebody in the comments said, he was bad with money anyway. $30,000 you won. Now, mind you, now, mind you, okay? These, this is all jokes, right? This is, we need laughter, all right, in these tough times. So that's what I'm providing y'all. So nobody get offended. I don't think any of y'all will get offended. You guys are emotionally intelligent. Shout out to the royal family. But here's the thing. Jamal, you can do whatever you want with your money, right? He won the lottery. It's, it's, it's all his. But see, God takes care of fools and babies. And luckily, they only kicked you up and smacked you around and took your chain, right? Luckily, it didn't end up fatal, okay? So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna shot that out. We're going to give thanks for that, right? We've got to keep it positive as much as we can. But Jamal, you stupid. You wasn't good with money no ways. And God said, you know what? We're going to teach Jamal a lesson because I'm tired of talking to him. Okay. You got a little baby Jesus piece, $20,000. Who was the jeweler that charged you 20 grand for that little itty bitty chain? And you are in the hood wearing that chain around your neck, probably flossing. You probably went around and told the whole block that you won 30 grand. You probably were on the local news when you won the money, making yourself a target. See, this is what people don't understand. This is the difference between new money and old money. Old money is quiet. You ain't gonna know that the loafers on the feet cost a couple of hundred thousand, hundred thousand, hundred dollars. You know, I'm just saying. Why would you be, why would you make yourself a target? Granted, these men should have kept their hands and their feet to themselves. But at the end of the day, these people are in the ghetto. They hungry, they reckless, they wild. No, they shouldn't be that way, but they are, right? And you are in the ghetto, walking around, swinging your chain. That chain doesn't even look like it costs 20 grand, but we shall see. We shall see. They ain't gonna do nothing but pawn it. And take the money and and probably split the money several ways. They look like they need a bath, but that's neither here nor there. But Jamal, you stupid. You should have you should have invested in some self defense classes. Cause I seen you waddling when you was trying to run. Is this an insurance uh, scheme? I wonder. I wonder if this is an insurance scheme. I hope I hope Jamal was smart enough to have insurance on his uh overly priced chain this might be insurance fraud i don't know interesting a lot of people be out here frauding frauding people yo you never know because look at the way it looked like he knew them right now that i'm looking at it jamo i don't trust you anybody that will pay 20 grand for a chain and still be in the hood and that chain look like it's worth all of a thousand dollars you can't be trusted and you were waddling. I don't trust people who waddle like that with $20,000 worth of jewelry around their neck. Mm -mm. Speaking of money, so everybody is pissed off with Floyd Mayweather, right? 
Floyd Mayweather don't give two bleeps because that fight that he had with, uh, which one was it? Low, Jake Paul, whoever it was, uh, people were saying that they were upset that they spent that amount of money on pay-per-view um, because that wasn't really a fight. All Floyd Mayweather was doing was dancing around and yada, yada. That's what uh, Floyd Mayweather does. <laughs> he dances, he shuffles one, two step, may take a couple of hits, may throw a couple jabs, and he walks out there with the bag. So here is a uh, public service announcement from our good friend Floyd Money Mayweather. Like to hear it? Here you go. If you don't like me, don't write about me. Right. If you, don't, if you guys don't want to see me do no exhibitions, don't come. Don't watch. Facts. I, I come on record and tell y'all, when it comes to legalized bank robbing, I'm the best. <laughs> I changed my name from Pretty Boy Floyd. Mm -hmm. When I changed it to Money Mayweather, I started making money. You got to speak things to an existence. That's right. So y'all can keep, y'all can write the stories that y'all want to write. Mm -hmm. I don't care if y'all write good stories. I don't care if y'all write bad stories. What else? At the end of the day, I will always have a last laugh. If you don't like me, don't write about me. If you don't write, you heard it. Money Mayweather said he doesn't care if you write good stories. He doesn't care if you write bad stories. He said at the end of the day, he's going to get the last laugh. Actually, the most high is going to get the last laugh. But I understand where you were going with that, Money Mayweather. I'm not mad at it. It is what it is. Listen, Floyd Mayweather, you do what works for you, okay? Uh, so basically for the people in the back, let that sink in. And funny enough, Simon Guabadia posted this to his page. So I, I thought that that was interesting considering Simon Guabadia is going through a whole bunch of media, uh, melee. He's surrounded in, in a bunch of media melee, which reminds me y'all today is June 10th. Listen, listen on, uh, what the heck is the name of the channel on YouTube? Fallon Guabadia is going to be, um, Fallon Guabadia sat down with a YouTuber by the name of uh, Adam. I don't remember his last name. I talked about this uh, day before yesterday in the morning boogie morning show. Up and Adam, A-D-A-M. Up and Adam is the name of the YouTube channel. So Fallon Guabadia's interview is going to be premiering on his YouTube channel tonight. Today's the 10th, right? Yeah. So that should be interesting. I'm definitely going to be talking about that tomorrow after i watch it anyway so simon gobadia posted this to his instagram page and i said to myself oh simon is letting y'all know he don't care if you post good stories about him or bad stories about him at the end of the day he got he's getting to the bag but i do understand what floyd was saying i don't know what people expected um showtime allegedly i heard on the breakfast club yesterday during their, I guess, their hot topics uh, round or rumor report, whatever it's called, uh, that Showtime is going to be issuing refunds to their subscribers um, or to their customers. I guess people were having issues streaming the fight. I know Soldier Boy was on live complaining that he couldn't stream the fight because Show and Showtime is messing up and they're going to give him his money back. So just issue them the refund, child. Is that going? Is Floyd Mayweather and whatever his the other guy's name is? Are they going to lose revenue? Yeah, but they probably won't even feel it. It's probably not even going to put a dent into what they've already um, accumulated, right? So it is what it is. Did you watch the fight? Drop down in the comments and let me know if you actually saw the fight. Are you getting a refund from Showtime? Let me know. That'd be interesting, right? Ah, let's see. Hold up. What's next on the menu, y'all? Woo! Happy Thursday, everybody. It's Friday Eve. Lord, tomorrow, let me tell you, tonight at midnight, it is going down, okay? Everybody is coming out with music. Not everybody, but it's going to be a whole lot of, whole lot of, a whole lot of, whole lot of. French Montana is going to be releasing a song. I don't know if he's releasing an album, but my whole thing is, look, if you... If you heard one French Frenchman Montana song, you've heard them all, right? It's very repetitious um, or repetitive, excuse me. 
Anywho, moving along. So this is according to page six. Y'all know I like reporting from page reporting on articles from page six. Taraji P. Henson. She is set to star in Annie live as Miss Hannigan. Let me tell you something right now. First of all, uh, Miss Taraji. Taraji, you look fly, sis. You're looking good in this picture. Um, I love the fact that we are seeing Miss Hannigan was mean, right? Yes, yeah, she was. But I love to see growth and evolution in any entertainer, rapper, singer, actor, actress, hell, dancer. I like to see evolution and range, right? That's really the word that I'm looking for. I like to see range, right? Like Denzel can play a a wide array of characters. Um, I don't like to see artists... Uh, typecasts because it usually usually doesn't work in their favor right uh, but Taraji we know we've always seen her kind of casted as the same character like when she was in Hustle and Flow uh, Cookie Lion you know it, it's that that attitude sassy neck rolling hell even in um, Wreck-It Ralph 2 Disney movie she was uh, what the heck was her name I think her name was Yes. She was like the internet head of the internet. That's the character she played. Cute movie. Check it out if you didn't. And she was like a little sassy as well. And I was like, that's Taraji P. Henson. You know, I could tell by her voice. But anyway, I'm rambling. So it's good to see that she is, first of all, it's good to see that she's still working, right? Shout out to Taraji. So she's she's been known to play like a lot of these tough characters that's basically my point so it's kind of good to see something a little bit different um i wonder if she's gonna be sassy miss hannigan like neck rolling miss hannigan i don't know either way either way good for you taraji p henson so she's um let me see when is this gonna be airing hold on i'm scrolling through the article on my phone they like her over there at NBC Universal Television streaming. So that's a good thing. Here's some pictures. Yeah, I don't have to read the long article. Oh no. There it is. Carol, that's Carol Burnett. First of all, she's one of my faves too. When I tell you I'm a t I, I'm a TV junkie, it dawns on me all the time when I have conversations. Usually it dawns on me when I have conversations with the, you know, the kitchen table crew. Y'all don't remember this, that, and the third, that episode when they're like, dang, no, I don't remember that. Or, yeah, how do you remember that? Like, it just, it just, <laughs> anyway, the Carol Burnett show is a show that I watched when I was little or whatever. And I thought Carol Burnett was hilarious. So Carol Burnett uh, played Mrs. Hannigan uh, in Annie back in the day. So this would be good. I think this is good for her. Um good for you Taraji I, I like Taraji I really do like she's not problematic you know she's real she's really herself I don't know it's something about Taraji that I really really like like she's cool you know she's really really cool and she's constantly working on herself I, I just I don't want to hear no bad press about Taraji child please don't nobody come out the woodworks and try to make something up I mean if it's true then of course let the public know but if not please Lord protect Taraji P at all costs. All right. Do your thing, Taraji. Harpo, who is this woman? Girl. So yesterday, this was circulating on uh social media. First of all, I know you're wondering who the hell is this, right? This is K Michelle. Yes, K Michelle, honey. From Love and Hip Hop. Can't raise a, a boy or whatever. Can't raise a man, whatever the heck the name of her song is. This hair color on her looks absolutely amazing this looks fierce to me she looks like monice she looks a little bit like asian dollish this is k michelle is this a filter i couldn't believe it i kept looking at the picture trying to find k michelle in the picture let me see there's another one i hope she didn't delete it here it is what? That's K. Michelle, y'all? Can you y'all believe this? Mm -mm. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. 
So she looks good. She put Grand Rising Beautiful Souls, deleted last one on accident. But anyway, have a great today. What? K Michelle, that's you for real? She looks completely different, right? Can y'all let me look at the picture? Does that look K Michelle-ish to you? Maybe it's the hair color. Cause I'm used to seeing her with like black hair and some that deep uh red hair. But this hair color, the hair color looks good on her. But K Michelle, what did you do to yourself? You look like a completely different person. I don't know. I have to see her. I have to see her uh live or something. She gotta go live. Oh my God, I, I, I'm shocked. You look good though, but is that really you? I'm scared. Everybody's changing up their faces and people are scaring me. They're looking weird and not in a bad way. Some people in a bad way, but it's just scary. Speaking of changing up their face, I got love for little Kim's. So don't get it twisted. Um, I posted this to my Instagram yesterday, right? So I, little Kim announces that she has a new memoir, right? This is old. I think I posted this months ago, but I had to repost it to bring up my point, right? So little Kim's book is scheduled to be released on November 2nd. She's already, uh, doing her pre-sale. So if you go on Amazon, you can, you know, save the book, like buy the book ahead of time. And then it'll be shipped out to you. I think like November 1st or something like that. It'll be shipped out so that you can get it before on or at whatever by the November 2nd. Anywho. So then I thought it was interesting that Foxy Brown made an announcement that she coming out with a book. Okay. Book coming soon. And then she tagged Kim Osorio. So if you go to Kim Osorio, honey, if you don't know who Kim Osorio is, I ain't got time. You should know if you old, old school hip hop head, you should know exactly who Kim Osorio is. But she is a journalist, basically. Bottom line, she's like the hip hop journalist. She worked on the source. She worked with the source magazine for many, 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 many years. OK, anyway, so she's supposed to be coming out with a book. And Kim Osorio is basically going to be writing the book with Foxy Brown, allegedly. So Foxy Brown made this announcement. She posted this to her stories a couple days ago. And there you have it. Um, the end of the year should be very interesting. So Little Kim's book is already done. You know, pre-sale, it's available for pre-sale. So Foxy Brown, I'm waiting for the announcement of her book, you know, this official announcement and the rollout to see what this is like. This is going to be good, okay? This is going to be a great gift for Christmas, Little Kim's book. And if Foxy Brown actually comes out with her book, because no shade, Inga, You've been saying that she was coming out with a documentary, a lot of things, but, but I understand that things take time. You know, if it's not done right, you don't want to do it. I totally understand. But, uh, Inga, what I'm going to need you to do is keep it cute. Okay. And stop fighting with these young rap girls out here. Okay. It's not a good look. I'm just saying. So shout out to Foxy and Kim. Um, I don't think that there's going to be anything, to be honest with you, me, me, I don't think that there's going to be anything in this book that me, uh, that me, that I am going to be shocked about or didn't know about, right? Um, yeah, I was, I was in the mix of everything, you know, or in the know of a lot of things back in the day, some things that I probably was too young to know about when it comes to these two, or just when it comes to hip hop. And of course, Wendy Williams, okay, the voice of New York back in the day uh, was not shy about sharing her opinions about either of these two ladies. She interviewed both of them. Both of them she tried to shade and they shaded her back. Little Kim put her in her place. So did Foxy. So she had them in studio. So, and also Wendy Williams reported on, you know, the whole scene, you know, uh, back in the day. So when these two ladies were at the height of their career. So there, to me, I don't think that there's going to be anything in the book that's going to be like, oh, I didn't know that, you know, or, oh, my God, gasp moment, you know. But it's still it's still good to see. I think all of our legends in hip hop uh, should definitely be writing books. Raekwon wrote a book as well. Uh, I don't I think it's already out. I didn't get a chance to get my hands on that because it just came back to my memory, as a matter of fact. So I think a lot of our legends should definitely chronicle their times, their time in hip hop, whether they do like a documentary or uh, a book, you know, Mary J. Blige, she's coming out with her My Life documentary on Amazon Prime. That's coming out, what, June 25th? So things like that. I want to see 
the people that I grew up with, you know, chronicling their, uh, their lives and their careers or whatever. So there may not be, there's a lot of people that may not know who's Inga. Inga, that's Foxy Brown's <laughs> real name, Inga, right? So this can open them up to a whole new audience. And those of us, you know, old school heads, give us a little bit of nostalgia, you know, something to actually hold tangible, to hold on to, to remember some of our faves. So I'm rooting for it. You know, all jokes aside, I am, I am rooting for Foxy Brown's book. You know, I actually want her to come out with a book and um, Little Kim's book as well. I'm, I'm here for it. So drop down in the comments to tell me what you think. What do you want to, what is it that you want to see uh, in Foxy Brown's book? What do you want to see in Little Kim's book? What do you want to know, I should say? Faith also wrote a book, Keeping the Faith. And she, she I mean, she did I right, talking about, you know, uh, Biggie or whatever. But there wasn't anything in there that I found to be, oh, my God, I did not know this. OMG. So, I don't know. We shall see. So, shout out to them. All right, up next, the Jasmine Brand on Instagram posted about your favorite uncle, Diddy. He's accused of stealing the idea for his black business discovery app from a young black developer. Wowzers. Are we shocked? This is Mr. Take That. Take that himself, right? <laughs> Apparently, it's not just a, a catchphrase, but it's probably the way he lives his life. So, um, <laughs> but uh, but so this slide reads: Building black wealth starts with investing in black-owned businesses and giving in entrepreneurs access to the consumers to the consumers needed to build sustainable companies that can thrive. Diddy was on live last week with a um, with a woman, with a black woman. I wish I would have screen recorded it. I don't remember the name of her business that she has. She has like an online outlet where um, it's kind of like webuyblack.com. You know, it's a site where you have access to many different um what do you want to say? Vendors, I guess, or sellers, you know, you want to buy laundry detergent. They have like a black owned comp a company that's black owned that sells a specific type of laundry detergent toothpaste. So it's kind of like a, a, I guess a whole, uh, yeah, just like a, a marketplace kind of right of black owned businesses. And he did a live with this lady. This is at, he started doing going on this this type of rant after the anniversary of the Tulsa, Oklahoma uh, bombing. Right. So he did a live with this lady and she he was like, you know, we got to share the wealth and we got to come together and all of this. And I'm like, what does Diddy have up his sleeve? I personally thought real quick sidebar. I thought that Diddy was trying to create a distraction because this new information or quote unquote new information is coming out about who was really responsible for Biggie's death. Right. They're saying they're alleging that uh, Suge Knight is the one that financed the hit. Diddy was the intended target. If you followed the if you were part of the bad boy era and you were really sinking your teeth into all of that at the time, that's not new information that w I've heard. Let me speak for myself. Right. So we've I've heard that Diddy was the intended target. There's many people who have come out and said that. So I'm wondering if Diddy is creating a distraction, so to speak, um, because, number one, he's probably financial trouble number two he wants to create a distraction so nobody will start digging into asking him about this these new quote-unquote findings because the detective that was on the case said that there is some information that's sealed and some information that's not and he was kind of kicked off the case I guess because he was digging into too much there's been so many documentaries that showcase that um so I don't know. That was my little theory. Um, and it's not that Diddy is not for black businesses or he doesn't make that a part of his brand um, and acts like he's for black business. But it's just something that seems a little bit underhanded and sneaky when it comes to him. There's always an angle, you know, he's like a little he's like a hustler, you know. So we've seen that throughout the years, you know. So, um, yeah, that's my theory. So listen to this young man. Your heart ripped out of your chest. Hold on. 
I hate that it mutes it. Listen to this young man. Had your heart ripped out of your chest? For the past year, I've been building, developing, and promoting my black business discovery app called Circulate. This past Wednesday, P. Diddy announces he's creating a black business discovery platform called Shop Circulate. This is what the black entrepreneur faces all the time. We go underfunded, we can't get loans, we don't have a network to get resources from. Like, look, man, I'm a kid from the South Ward of Newark, New Jersey. I can't fight this machine all alone. I need help. Follow us on Instagram, donate to our GoFundMe, links are in the bio. And if somehow this reaches the ear of P. Diddy directly, you can email me at drixon at circulattheapp.com. First of all, shout out to this young man. <laughs> Did you hear him say that he was from Newark, New Jersey? Shout out to New Jersey. Drop one of Clues bombs for Newark, New Jersey. Okay. Now, first of all, <laughs> all right, this already warms my heart because he is a young entrepreneur, as he said, a young black entrepreneur. And he made, a, and, and he, you know, I'm going to be biased because he's from New Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl through and through. Anywho. All right, let me get serious. The way that he represented himself brings a tear to my eye and it makes me proud because he obviously is you can see that he is very emotionally intelligent mature um and he handled himself professionally he asked have you ever had your heart ripped out or you know what it feels like to have your heart ripped out i can only imagine when he saw I think that's what it's called with the, the live that he did with the lady. I don't remember. I can't remember exactly what it is. But again, he did a live with a lady and they were talking about this very like, uh, I just explained it. Anyway, whatever. I'm rambling. Shout out to this young man. And I'm so glad, so glad that this is the approach that this young man took. This man put together. He First of all, he has his logo in the top right corner. Uh, he, he has his logo at the end of the video. <laughs> okay. Marketing 101. And he let it be known that he worked very hard on this circulate app. And I'm pretty sure that he has tons and tons and tons of evidence to support that he, he built, created and built this circulate app. He probably has his logo and the, and the name trademarked. And I understood what he said when he said, do you know how hard it is for a young black entrepreneur to get funding, you know, uh, even to get a loan? He probably I don't know how old this young man is, but I'm pretty sure that he probably tried to get business loan after business loan probably was denied. I'm just assuming probably tried to get people to invest into his business probably was denied. And then here comes Diddy, who has financial privilege, right? Um, who is a brand himself and just takes the idea, allegedly, this is what this young man is alleging, takes the idea, and because he has means, connections, and he has money, he can just slap his name on it and take something that's not his. I do also like the fact that I would be upset too if I was this young man. That's the point that I was making. I do also like the fact that he... Um, he shouted out, you know, if you'd like to support, you know, support our GoFundMe. And he said, if this reaches P. Diddy, you know, you can send me an email at such and such and such dot com. Perfect. Perfect. Because he did not let his emotions overtake him so much so that he got on his cell phone and started cussing and carrying on and mother bleep this and Diddy, you a mother bleep this. This course of action that this young man took is going to cause people's antennas to go up and what i'm hoping and praying for is that the right antennas go up to invest further into his business to propel his business along he didn't have to come on here and trash diddy diddy has a reputation of doing exactly what this young man is alleging to many other people right so he doesn't have to state the obvious but the way that he conducted himself is you catch more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. Is that how the saying goes? Did I get that right? Right? And he knew exactly what to do and how to do it. And I'm proud of him. Even though the circumstances to which he had to come to the public were gut-wrenching. You know, I know he's probably hurt. 
He probably got angry. He probably cussed and kicked the wall, but he didn't let that show. He's a professional at the end of the day, and he is representing his very brand that he worked hard to build. And you, sometimes when you want to come out of character, if you are a brand and you're trying to build something, especially for your community, you have to be a representation of that brand even when you don't want to be and you want to just be human. And that's not easy. And I'm telling you, I watched this so many times and a tear came to my eye because I'm so proud of, I don't, I'm not worried that he is, that he's, he's going to get his just due. Oh yes. Because when you do things in decency and order, you do things from a pure heart. Yeah. You may get kicked. Yeah. You may get punched and slapped down, but I'm going to tell you something, the right people, you are going to be in the view of the right people. God has put you in a position to be in front of the right people or be within earshot or eyeshot of the right people. And the rest is going to be endless blessings. So I'm not worried about that, but what I'm proud of is his professionalism and the way that he did that, that made me so emotional and in a good way. It really did because I'm telling you so many people F this, I'm a, you know what F, and they're human. We're all, we're human. Some of us, we're human, right? So we're going to get emotional. We're going to get angry. That is, that's, that happens. But he chose not to because he chose to represent his brand that he built and he's trying to continue to grow through and through. And that's not always easy. That's the point that I'm making. This should make him angry, but he didn't show it when it was time for him to get his point across. And that is important. A lot of people want to seat at the table, but they want to come kicking in the table and, 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 and they want their voices to be heard. They want to be slapping and punching. Listen, you do what works for you. But this young man knows that if he comes up here and acts all rowdy and rebellious, he may get a few, he may get some, some, some clicks and views for a short period of time. But I think his end goal is to continue to grow his business and to get his business out there and to get sponsors, donors. Now, I wonder if a lot of these, a lot of these people, these celebrities or entertainers or big figures who do a lot of talking about black people not sticking together. I wonder if they're going to put their money where their mouth is to invest in this young man. I wonder not that they have to, but I just wonder. So. Anywho, I don't even need to read this. Um, yeah, this is on the Jasmine brand. So you can check this out. This is on their Instagram. I'm pretty sure that this is on their, their website. But kudos to you, young man. Kudos to you. And shout out to New Jersey. You represent New Jersey very well. You know, I can't represent New Jersey by myself, you know. Shout out to you. <laughs> All right, up next. Ooh, ciao. Hey, Baldy. This is Jermaine Dupree. So apparently Jermaine Dupree is in some legal troubles. Listen, it happens. It happens to the best of the best. You know, uh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. So, uh, yeah. So this is according to Radar Online. Let me pull this up on my phone. So according to documents obtained by Radar, uh, the IRS yikes, um, is basically saying that Jermaine Dupree owes them owes them money. So they filed a lien a federal lien against Jermaine Dupri in Georgia. So the document accuses the producer of owing a ton of money for the years 2013 through 2018. The document accuses the producer of owing a ton of money in the upwards of, or the grand total owed for the years comes to $493,000 and no, $493,000. $95, excuse me, which includes a ton of penalties and interest since the bills remain unpaid for years. So apparently this is not the first time that Jermaine Dupree has had financial troubles. Um, he recently celebrated his 25th anniversary of his label back in 2018. So, so deaf. Uh, he has a long history of problems paying his bills. So back in 2002, Dupree had his property seized by the IRS um, owing over millions of dollars. So the feds, they arrived at his house and seized a portion of his car collection along with furniture and computers. 
Back in 2013, he paid off a massive $3 million, $3 million lien for taxes owed for 2006 to 2008. Wasn't it rumored that uh, Jay-Z paid some debt, some tax debt for Jermaine Dupri? Was that, was that him? I don't know why that just popped in my mind. I think I, we heard that, right? Who did Jay-Z pay taxes off for? Jermaine Dupri, no? Anyway, the following year, Dupree had his Atlanta ma mansion foreclosed on after he failed to make his monthly payments. He tried for years to save the home from being seized by the bank, but ended up failing in the end. That sucks. At the time, Dupree owed $2.5 million on his property, worth $3.7 million. Dupree accused the bank of, char of changing the terms of his loan and making it impossible for him to make his monthly payments. That sucks. It happens to it happens to the everyday person too, man. Um, what I would say is downsize. I mean, I know it's easier said than done, and sometimes a lot of these rappers, you know, um, and entertainers, not just rappers, they feel pressured, I guess, to keep up, you know, appearances and for their image, I guess. I I I don't know, and maybe the bank could have changed the terms. Um, you know, a lot of banks have had have been accused and found guilty of discriminatory practices when it comes to black people. So there's a possibility, you know, I'm not negating that. Definitely a possibility that the terms could have been changed for his uh, loan. Um, making it impo I mean, he would have to prove that in court if he's going to seek some sort of justice for that. But I do. I wish Jermaine Dupree well. Uh, reason being is because I guess he's worked hard. I, I don't know what he does in his personal life. There's a lot of rumors going around. A lot of rumors going around about this dude. Fun fact. The night that Biggie Smalls went home to glory, March 9th, 1997, Jermaine Dupree was there that night. Believe it or not. Well, he said it. came out of his own mouth. And someone else confirmed it. So, you know, like that's a useless fact. I just wanted to throw that in there. Best of luck to you, Jermaine. Best of luck. Um... The Brat has a show coming out. Did y'all know that? Uh, her and her girlfriend, the uh, BB Judy, is that her name? BB Judy, right? Judy. They have a show coming to uh, We TV. I think I saw the commercial when I was watching um, Growing Up Hip Hop. Lord have mercy. I don't. I don't know if I want to see a show with the Brat and and BB Judy. The Brat is funny though. I will say that the Brat is very entertaining. Um. Yeah, so that should be interesting. All right, up next, if you well, first of all, before I move on, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining, welcome to the Morning Boogie Morning Show. All right, please hit the like button. That is your admission fee. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks to those of you who have already paid your admission fee. Shout out to those of you who are here watching the replay. Uh, on YouTube. Welcome. Drop down in the comments. Share your thoughts. Don't be shy. You know, don't be shy. Sometimes I do drop down in the comments and comment. Um, but I'm usually like in and out, in and out. Right. So don't be shy. Talk amongst yourselves. Just keep it cute. Keep it respectful. I greatly appreciate the participation. And if you're watching the replay, get in the comment section, sound off, you know, let me know how you feel. Let's get some engagement going up, kicked up on this channel, right? I really appreciate those of you who, who do engage uh, with the content. I really do. Can't say that enough. All right, moving along. Blackenterprise.com reports that Tory Lanez speaks on the celebrities who distance themselves after the Megan Thee Stallion situation. Yowzers. Now, it seems Tory Lanez is doing a lot more interviews than he did a year ago, right? Obviously, makes sense, not to mention the pandemic. I get that, right? But this is, this is, I'm glad that he's speaking out about this. I feel that he has every right to talk about how this affected him. The situation is affecting him, how it has affecting him, and how it could possibly affect him in the future. And I do not think that there's anything wrong with him talking about how he was treated after this situation, right? I, I, you know, a lot of these media outlets made money off of this, this entire story. 
you know, and off of his name. So, and they didn't send him a cut of the money, right? So why can't he express himself and talk about the situation? I don't see there's anything, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. A lot of people felt that he shouldn't be talking about nothing. Well, obviously, from a legal standpoint, he can talk a little bit. So I feel like he is ready to discuss certain things. And when asked certain questions, he chooses to answer them, right? I, what's wrong with that? If he couldn't speak about it, then he wouldn't, right? I mean, we can't, we can't shut everybody up. People are going to talk. Like, we can't, you don't have the right to speak. Why? This is this man's life possibly on the line. Are you kidding me? He has a career. He has a family. Whatever. Anyway, so rapper Tory Lanez is speaking out amid his ongoing case against Megan the Stallion. So it's been almost a year since the two rising stars were involved in a incident in Los Angeles that put Megan in the hospital and Tory in jail. Since the encounter, the two rappers have taken little jabs at each other with Megan boldly naming Tory as her alleged person who did what he did while he continues to deny the claim. The Toronto native recently appeared on million dollars worth of game podcast. That's with Willie and, uh, uh, Wallow and Gilly. I said, Willie, they're hilarious by the way, million dollars worth of game podcast is definitely worth checking out anyway, where he candidly addressed the case and gave a shout out to the celebs who haven't turned their back on him while, uh, the singer understands that high profile talent had to protect their brands. He also noticed how others were afraid to express their support for him publicly. He says, you guys got to understand people have brands before I t look at Tory Lanez. Like it's me. Tory Lanez is a brand, whatever artists, whatever artists is their brand, whatever at the moment, it wasn't, uh, the look to put their brand on it. Oh, I get what he's saying. Like as far as doing features and music and stuff like that. So he's, he understands. I get it. And I respect him for saying that because he started, he didn't start out by saying F these people or whatever. He says, look, I understand. Cause I think he was supposed to be doing a song or he did a song with Jojo. I think it was, or somebody, I don't remember which one of these, these girl pop girls he did a song. with. I think it was Jojo and he was removed from the album or removed from the song or the version of the song that he did. You know, you had a lot of NBA players speaking out. A lot of people had their opinions when this all went down, right? Everyone automatically believes what Megan Thee Stallion said. And it was just, I, I talked about this before, and it seems like it's getting close to the time where um, some sort of resolve is going to gonna come from the case. So I'll, be spe I'll, I'll give my opinion when, like I said, when the judge bangs that gavel. I've said it before uh, in past morning boogie morning shows but i'm not gonna really dive into my opinions and my thoughts too tough i did that twice when this first happened but i just feel like if megan can speak tori should be able to speak too because how the heck are we gonna know what happened if or make a decision uh in the court of public opinion anyway if we don't hear both sides of the story even in court both sides have to plead their case, right? In order for a jury to make a decision or a judge, right? So why is Tory why was Tory muzzled but Meg was able to speak? I, to me, that screams red flag to me. Anyway, I digress. So, uh, so you guys knew that the situation took place back in July 2020. Um, so Tori and Meg, you know, they were leaving a party. And then after that, all hell broke loose. That, that, that's pretty much the long and short of it. Everybody should know what is going on or what allegedly happened that night, because it was like from July until the end of the year of last year of 2020, that's all that was all, all over the news. So, um, let me see. I'm trying to think. Yeah, he just basically said, like, shout out to the people that continue to support him. And I respect that. I definitely respect that. And he didn't necessarily name drop anybody who turned their back on him. But he did say that people turned their back on him. But he understands because people have a brand to protect. And you know what? I think, I think a lot of people were pre peer pressured 
into automatically believing Meg because number one, she's a black woman and you have the whole protect black woman hashtag or the whole protect black woman trope. Yeah, I said it's a trope. I think it's gimmicky. I feel like if you are a protector of black woman, women, you don't have to go around chanting protect black women, protect black women when it's convenient for the person chanting it. Or, you know, I, I, that's just me. Maybe everybody is not gimmicky when they say it. Some people mean it with their whole chest and some people don't. Okay, it's gimmicky. Just like the whole strong black woman narrative trope. It's a trope um, and that's a whole nother topic for a different day. So I feel a lot of people were peer pressured into automatically believing Meg and anyone who questioned, well, hold on, Meg. Now, how you got pomp, but... You know, if you say that, because that's happened to me, I'm like, okay, hold on. So if you got this, then how come, why are you vi victim blaming? I ain't victim blaming nobody. I'm asking a logical question. You know, that doesn't move me at all because I understand the, the psychology behind all of that BS. Uh, so I think a lot of people were peer pressured or brainwashed or, they felt like, okay, I have to go along with the public. No, no, no. We can't question what happened that night. We can't question Meg about what happened that night because that would be victim blaming. And we need to protect black women. And then not to mention when Megan uh, went on to have many performances after that incident, um, which specifically Saturday Night Live, you know, she did the whole protect black women she had an excerpt from one of malcolm x's speeches which was kind of taken out of context but that's neither here not taken out of context but that one particular part uh of malcolm x's speech that people like to run into the ground and they don't play the entire speech but that's neither here nor there that's no shade to anybody shout out to malcolm x rest in peace um so you know that whole it, it built up all of this momentum, protect black women, protect black women. And yes, we should protect black women. You know, I, I, we sh <laughs> duh, y y right? That goes without saying. I, I mean, I don't know, whatever, whatever. I just feel like a lot of people, you know, had a lot to say uh, because they wanted to make themselves look good. That's the point that I'm getting at, right? They wanted to make themselves look good. So uh, what basketball player was it? I don't remember what basketball player it was, but... He basically said that Tory is a this and that and he should get this and that because he wanted to make himself look good. And it was like, oh, yeah, he's taking up for black women. That's amazing. Meanwhile, he's probably putting hands and feet on his women. That's probably not even black, probably doesn't even date black women. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not talking about Tory. I digress. What do you guys think? Drop down in the comments and sound off tell me how you feel tell me what you think tell me what you know no don't tell me what you know please i i don't i don't want to know anything else because some of the stuff that used to come to my inbox <sighs> you know it's just sometimes i don't want to know certain things you know what i'm saying i really don't want to know but i thank you i thank you for thinking of me to send certain things to me you know to my inbox as receipts i guess I, I appreciate it, but sometimes I just, I, sometimes it's not good to know everything, child. It's too much. It's just way too much. Speaking of too much, this guy, I tell you, he's like a roach. And what I mean by that is he will stand the test of time, you know, through nuclear war, you know, all types of, all types of disaster, natural disasters. He will stand the test of time. So people... Uh, dot com reports that Tyler Perry announces new Medea movie three years after retiring the character. He says we need to laugh. No. Yes, we do need to laugh, Tyler. Yes, I agree with that. But I yeah. Chow. Let me I thought Medea kicked the bucket. Didn't she, didn't they have a fume for Medea? I don't know. I can't with Medea. I can't. I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't. I really can't. Um, moving along, let me read this. So the producer, Tyler Perry, producer, writer, uh, actor, 51, he announced uh, the return of the beloved Medea character for an upcoming movie that is exclusive to Netflix. Let me, listen, I'm not mad at him. This man knows how to make his coin, okay? He gave Prince Harry and Meghan Markle he gave them some money 
and let him stay at what one of his mansions or something and drive his car. Okay, Black Wealth, I ain't mad at it. So he basically made this announcement saying that we need to laugh, you know, too much is going on. And he went to explain, went on to explain his uh, reasoning behind bringing Medea back. Now, the upcoming film is titled Medea, A Homecoming, right? That's going to be released on Netflix in 2022. Um, so Netflix announced this recently on Tuesday. So, of course, this is going to be written and directed by Tyler Perry. Uh, the film will be the 12th installment of the Medea franchise. So a uh, Medea homecoming follows the last installment, a Medea family funeral, which debuted in 2019. Like I said, didn't Medea, did Medea kick the bucket? I don't know. Let me tell you the last Medea movie I saw. Was it Medea goes to jail? I think it was Medea goes to jail. With That's what uh, Keisha Knight Pulliam, right? Rudy. I think that's the last Medea movie that I saw. After that, I don't think I I see I don't I didn't see Medea Boo Medea's Boo, uh Halloween specialist whatever that child whatever. Uh, during an interview on Bevy Smith Serious XM show, uh, now it's called Bevelations. Y'all gotta check that out. But anyway, I'm 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 all over the place today, y'all. Let me let me stay on track. Pardon me. I'm excited. And it's a whole lot of topics today. Make sure you're hitting the like button. Thank you. Uh, back in 2018, Bevelations, um, which is Bevy Smith's Sirius XM uh, radio show, he laughed as he said, it's time for me to kill that old B. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I just don't want to be her age playing her. This is what Tyler Perry said, adding, so we're going to say goodbye to her. A prequel series titled Mabel is in the works with Showtime based on Medea's early life in her 20s, living in 1972 Atlanta. This is what Entertainment Tonight reported in April. So Tyler Perry realizes that Medea is his moneymaker, right? Before Medea was big screen you know Medea was a play like Tyler Perry had his plays and he would travel so I guess he realizes that that's his money maker so now there's going to be a Medea prequel now that I might check out because that might be funny but child are are y'all tired of Medea I'm just, I'm not hating first of all y'all know how I feel about Tyler Perry because if you watch my my Tyler Perry's sister's review then you already know, right? But I'm not against anybody doing what needs to be done to create content, um, to create original content, right? No matter how slow the scenes are or how poorly progressed the characters are. Either way, he's creating content. He's doing his thing. His work ethic, I admire. Um, and I don't knock him for that. There's people who like him. There's people who don't. So it is what it is. If you ask Spike Lee, I'm pretty sure Spike Lee will say uh, no. So here is what Tyler Perry had to say. Let me shut my mouth. And like to hear it. Here it go. Hey, guess what's happening? Okay, I won't take uh, that. <clears throat> I won't take uh, that. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, Medea. <clears throat> Medea. Uh, this is Tyler Perry saying, this is my dear saying I'm coming back and I'm on Netflix. I can't wait to take you some guys out. Damn it. Hey, my dear's coming to Netflix. We need to laugh, man. Too much is going on in the country. We need to laugh. So I was done, but I, but I wasn't, but she's coming back. My dear, I hey, I'm with it. I'm here. I am my dear on Netflix. I can't wait. There you have it. Medea has spoken. So, Medea is coming to Netflix. What was the name of the movie, y'all? Oh, my gosh. That he did on, um, it was on Netflix. What the heck was the name of the movie? Um, and Felicia Rashad was in the movie. Hey, guess what's happening? What was the name of the movie? Dang it. And as she bashed her husband head in and threw him down the basement stairs, and we thought that he was he was dead and he wasn't, and come to find out Felicia Rashad was his uh, mama. What the heck was the name of that movie? And uh, Tyler Perry was looking like uh, Papa Bear from Bernstein Bears. I did a whole review about this movie, like, like whatever, like two almost two years ago, right? 
That's when I was on camera. The good old days. What the heck was the name of that movie? Put it in the comments, the name of that movie. That movie was hilarious. And Felicia Rashad was crazy. Did they kidnap the girl? Cicely Tyson was in there too. She was being held hostage. And the girl was a lawyer, I think. Yeah, she was like an attorney. Anyway, he did that movie for Netflix. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Surpri aside from the wigs, surprisingly, that movie wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, you know? It did tickle me. My, um, You know, I did giggle a little bit. But the suspense was good. Felicia Rashad and Cicely Tyson and whatever that girl's name is who was the lawyer, the, the main character. No, she wasn't. Was she? The, no, she wasn't the main character. No, he was dating a old that older lady. The lawyer was the one that ended up being kidnapped, I think, right? Child, I don't remember. Y'all know the name of the movie I'm talking about, man. It was on Netflix last year or the year before that. Anyway, drop it in the comments. So he's 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 built a relationship with Netflix. Uh that seems to be the way to go. This is a lucrative deal, I think. He's got First of all, Tyler Perry has BET Plus on lock, okay? Um a lot of his a lot of his shows and his material is on BET Plus. I used to subscribe to BET Plus when I was reviewing Tyler Perry's Bruh, which is back. By the way, if y'all care, I'm not reviewing it. That show is clickbait. <laughs> catfish okay i thought it was good until it wasn't um so yeah no i think i did two seasons of bruh i think <laughs> i'm not doing season three look i'm barely hanging on to sisters to tyler perry's sisters that is renewed for season three and and i'll be reviewing that uh as well um until i get tired just like i did at the end of toward the end of season two so he's got bt plus unlock he's got bet right because sisters comes on bet and they always play in his movies now he's back with netflix listen i'm not mad at him man he's he's really he's a really smart businessman for somebody who you know didn't go to school to learn how to do this you know what i'm saying um the good book says your gifts will make room for you and i wholeheartedly believe that all right, up next, y'all. So this is the Shade Room on Instagram. They posted, you know, Culture 3, the Migos. Okay, Friday is going to be a zoo because everybody is coming out with music. So I guess their highly anticipated album, Culture 3 from the Migos, is going to be dropping on um, Friday. There are, there are, there is a feature, um, with Cardi B on the album. So everybody is treating it as if Cardi B is releasing music, you know. Um, <laughs> all these rap, let me tell you something. A lot of these rap girls are releasing music and I'm here for it. I hope they all diss each other. I'm keeping it real. Diss each other, all of y'all diss each other. Make female rap interesting or make rap interesting again. Just get to dissing. Y'all doing it anyway on, on social media, subliminally or whatever. Put it on wax. Anyway, let's listen to what the Migos have to say about the release of their new album. Like to hear it? Here it go. What's happening? What's up? It's the Migos. Hey. We done stepped into the shade room. Okay. Shade room, you dig? Make sure you check out our interview Friday. Coaching 3. Friday. Yes, Friday. sir. Yes, sir. The trilogy. You dig? What's happening, roommates? The gang in the building. <laughs> What's happening? What's all right there you have it and they recently did an interview with uh with billboard um and offset basically is ready for migos to shift the culture again you know he said that they're gonna lead the pack with this album he also went on to say it's on billboard.com uh if you want to read the article he also said that they basically were the ones that made up the trap well they made trap style go pop that's what offset said in this interview with uh with billboard he said that they don't talk about that we made trap go pop talking about selling pounds and bricks and when and we hit billboard number one hip-hop artists weren't going number one like that but now it's just it just be bang 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 you know how they talk in sounds and stuff like that ah uh, do you agree with that do you think that migos was responsible for trap going pop pop meaning popular on the charts right uh yeah sure why not i guess i mean i don't think they're the only ones i don't think they were the ones to make it go um 
go pop, go pop, or they the one they rewind. I don't think that they are. They were the first to make trap music go pop. I don't think so, right? There have been other trap songs that were very popular on the Billboard charts, right? Who else was doing trap music? Wasn't Young Jock? Isn't that trap music? <laughs> Meet me and it's going down. That's not, is that trap? Or that's Diddy Bop music? Child, who knows? Ain't nothing but a little bit of straightening, child. I do like that song, I'm going to have to say. And Bad and Bougie. Yeah, now that I think about it, Bad and Bougie. Um, Stir Fry. I like the Migos. They're harmless, in my opinion, right? Like, they ain't, they ain't, bother, they ain't troubling nobody. Whatever happened with that ta- that case with Takeoff? I think he's going to court for that next year. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested in hearing um, the Migos album. I definitely am going to go to the song featuring Cardi B first. Their track list, they have their track list and their album cover on their um, their Instagram page, I think. I think Offset had it on his page. I forgot where I saw it. So Migos Culture 3 dropping at midnight shout out to the migos i guess all right up next ass is in session <laughs> megan the stallion she is going to be donating a four-year scholarship uh to an attendee of the rock nation school of music so a cup uh last month i think i talked about um uh, what is it called? The school, LIU, um, Long Island University, excuse me, Long Island University partnered with Rock Nation Management to come up with Rock Nation School of Music. So at this Rock Nation School of Music, right, they're going to, you're going to be learning about uh, music, sports, and entertainment, right? So classes are going to include, you know, uh, manage, management, music management, um, sound engineering, engineering, producing, writing, et cetera, et cetera. So Megan Thee Stallion is scheduled to be a lecturer at Long Island University in this Rock Nation music program. So not only is she going to be donating a scholarship to one individual who attends this program or who applies and is accepted into this program, she's also going to be a lecturer. Now, I want to know what in the heck are you going to be talking about, Megan? How are you going to come to school dressed, sis? Now, this picture is from her Instagram page. This is for her uh, rollout or promotion for her new song, Thought, S-H-I-T, which is going to be dropping at midnight tonight everybody is coming out with music on june 11th and i'm here for it may the best artists win let's go this is a competitive business it's a competitive sport it's cutthroat and everybody got to rap for their lives okay like their life's dependent on it anyway in some cases depending on your record label and management team it just might that's another story for another day so megan the stallion Professor Thotty, okay? I'm here for it, right? Do your thing. But her being in the music business, having grown up uh, with her mom being in the industry, as according to Meg, right? Uh, she's she's seen a lot, right? Experienced a lot. She's been hands-on, obviously. She's an artist. She writes. She's aware of production. She's worked with many different producers, writers, yada, yada. So I'm pretty sure she can add something to the course lineup for Rock Nation Management School of Music, Entertainment, and Sports. Um, So will you be applying to, (laughs) you know what I think? Attendance might have been very low, excuse me, while I take a sip of my agua. Mm. (coughs) Attendance might have been very low or admission might have been very low, uh, especially due to the pandemic. And not to mention, maybe uh, Long Island University doesn't offer uh, a wide array of programs that people are really flocking towards. So what better way to bring traffic and increase admission numbers to your university to prevent it from closing like St. Francis, okay, and Sister Act 2, 
than to get Rock Nation to partner with you. You kidding me? Everybody wants to be associated. Well, not everybody. Rock Nation, you hear Rock Nation, you think of Jay-Z automatically. So people who enter this program probably think like, oh my gosh, I am going to get all these jewels. I might even get to meet Jay-Z. And then they're going to have Meg The Stallion lecture. What? If she come to school dressed as Professor Thotty, do you know, girl, them admission, them admission numbers are going to go through the roof. And then next thing you know, after the first, after the second semester, all them students going to be in debt. Because I'm pretty sure they're probably going to take out loans <laughs> to go to school to see Professor Thotty. With all that body yaddy. I ain't mad at you. Marketing 101, girl, do your thing. If you silly enough to fall for the trick of the enemy, then so be it. No, nah, but the music program might be good. I don't know. It hasn't started. Classes don't start until fall 2021. I'm curious to see uh, if anyone, whoever enrolls in it, I want to hear firsthand, like, you know what? I might visit um, uh, the university's webpage or website and see what the course lineup is for the Rock Nation School of Music. They might not, they might keep it on the lock and key until the fall, but I'm going to do some digging and I'll get back to you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'll let you know. Let me tell you something. It's not easy being nosy. Okay. It's not. Anyway, while we're still talking about music for whatever reason, shout out to she Royal B on Instagram. <laughs> she underscore Royal B on Instagram for whatever reason, on the next episode of Versus, Trina and EVE, the Brick House Stallion from Rough Rider, Rough Rider's first lady, will be going head to head on the Versus stage for reasons unknown, as I stated. This matchup makes absolutely, positively no sense, in my opinion. Uh, first of all, when Eve was out, was Tr yeah, Trina was out before Eve, right? I don't know. Let me know. Second of all, <laughs> when Eve plays Love is Blind, right? What, what Trina going to play? Pull over? <laughs> I don't even know you, but I hate you. See, all I know is that my girlfriend used to date you. What is what is Trina gonna play to 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 counter that? What what is she gonna play? Here we go, here we go again with oh yeah, she might play here we go with Kelly Rowland, right? This is gonna be interesting. And then it's on a Wednesday. It's on Wednesday, June 16th. First of all, who 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 battles on a Wednesday? Who's battling on a Wednesday? Wednesday's choir rehearsal, right? Tuesday's Bible study, or is it the other way around? I don't know. I'm a heathen. What would I know? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I go to Bedside Baptist with Deacon Pillows, right? Who's, who's battling on a Wednesday night when people is, is trying to sing and practice, you know, at choir rehearsal so that they can win the competition to keep St. Francis from closing? Who, who's battling on a Wednesday I guess, and it's official, well, according to, so Bow Wow is actually going to be battling, um, uh, what's his name, Soldier Boy. I thought it was a joke. I said, I will believe it when I see it. But apparently, it's happening. Shout out to Simone Biles. Can we give Simone Biles some props? Shout out to Simone Biles. Like, she's the GOAT for real, for real. Shout out to her. Show this girl some love. No, but back to Trina and uh <clears throat> and Eve. I'm really confused by this. For real, for real. Who who who's who 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 asked for this? Little Kim said no, honey. Because Trina Trina wanted to go, <clears throat> excuse me, Trina wanted to battle uh or do a versus with little Kim. You know, they were down in Miami. Uh, not too long ago, and Little Kim was performing on stage. I think it was for HIV awareness, if I'm not, I think a HIV awareness um, concert. And uh, Little Kim had her daughter on stage, and then Trina came out, and Little Kim and Trina hugged it out. They were taking pictures. Things were all good. I don't know. I think they had they had beef or something. I don't know. Little Kim didn't like a lot of people, and Trina's 
got a stink, had a stink attitude when she was younger too. Anywho, who asked for this though? You know what though? Eve is smart because this is good promotion. Cause y'all know she has that show coming out. Don't you? Uh, she's going to be in that show, uh, Queens, her with Eve, Notori Naughton, Brandy. <laughs> okay. And there's another girl. Oh, I saw the trailer for it. It's coming to ABC. If you go on ABC's YouTube page, look at the trailer. I, I can't wait. I've reported on it like twice. I don't ha I don't know when there was a release date. I think somebody commented and said that they saw a release date. Um, but I'm not sure. I didn't see a release date for it, but it's called Queens. So this, this is good promotion. Okay, Eve said, look, I got things to do. She left the talk. Remember, she left the talk and said that she wanted to start a family. <laughs> okay. Eve said, look, ABC is giving me the bag. Swiss Beats and them about to give me the bag. I'm doing a versus. Do your thing, Eve. It's good to see Eve still around, right? She looks great. Treat her too. These are, these are, these are our legends, right? Are they legend status? These are our OGs. I'll put it that way. I'll say OG. Some people may say Trina's a legend, definitely, and uh, Eve is as well. But I always liked Eve. Acting, you know, she raps. Good for her. Keep keep that bag flowing. Keep yourself relevant. That's really the objective in entertainment, to keep finding ways to reinvent yourself and keep yourself relevant. All right, speaking of trying to be remain relevant, uh, shout out to that grapejuice.net. Um, I like this publication. I report from them quite frequently. So Azalea Banks is, sl is, is slamming Nicki Minaj. Okay. What else is new? Azalea don't like nobody. Like what's, what's good sis? What's, 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 what's the problem? What the problem is, what the problem is. So of course, you know, fans were ticked off because how dare anyone say anything about the queen, Nicki Minaj, right? You know, the her, her, her support group, her fans don't play that. They don't play them type of games. So Azalea Banks, she is sounding off once again. This is what the article reads. And this time it's rap royal Nicki Minaj that appears to have her hot and bothered. Azalea, do you just sit home, girl, and scroll through the internet, thumbing, 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 okay? Shout out to Cash Doll through the internet. And you just find things that irritate you and you just go off. Why don't you just get a YouTube channel? I would love to hear Azalea Banks' uh, <laughs> opinion about certain, like, shows. If she had, like, a YouTube channel and she did, like, reviews, that would be hilarious. She's a bit much. I could take Azalea Banks in small doses, though. But I don't disagree with everything that she says. I really don't. Anyway, she's so she got irked by a fan's suggestion that she could have been a contemporary of Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion if she wasn't so unhinged. And Azalea Banks proceeded to go off. She said that she would much rather be <laughs> SSRI free and unhinged than fat and tolerable with a Percocet addiction. Jesus. She said the barbs keep forgetting that Nikki is blacklisted for mocking the Vatican on live broadcast TV. So she went online and she continued her rant and she went on and on and on. She says the barbs really don't understand that type of uh, the type of blacklisting that comes from mocking the making fun, excuse me, of the uh, the Pope. You know, she says that's a different kind of cancel. She says your fave got demoted from international pop phenomenon to ghetto rap B word instantly. Lord have mercy. Uh, she says that she's relying on Doja and Megan's TikTok success and the kindness of their hearts to allow her to piggyback off of their relevancy, then turns around and disses them and says some shady ish in a live about TikTok. When, if it wasn't for Doja uh, or Meg, absolutely no one would give a flying F about Nicki Minaj and that boring ass Percocet music in 2021. This is what Azalea Banks went onto social media <laughs> and wrote in a post. Oh God. She said never glorified America's opioid crisis. And I'm smart enough to know not to F with the Vatican. I didn't perform at SNL with bullet holes through broken glass 
on an LED screen invoking very graphic imagery of a black woman's demise to capitalize on it when my drunk night out with the Jenners at the Jenners house gone wrong is not even comparable to the tragedy of a black woman literally being popped by police while she was asleep in her bed. That last part, I wholeheartedly agree with. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. If you were listening to the part where I mentioned about Tory Lanez, you know, kind of talking about certain people turning his back on him and Tory Lanez not being uh, afforded the opportunity to speak publicly, but Megan Thee Stallion can. And I mentioned her SNL performance and her, the whole protect black women, uh, the hashtag or statement that Meg used, uh, in her performance on SNL. I, this last, see, this is, I, listen, when I, when, when I feel somebody is saying something that is resonating with me and I agree with, I'm gonna give you props, you know, even though Azalea Banks definitely can be unhinged at time, but this last statement that she made, that's the ish that people don't want to hear. So what do you guys think about it? Now, as far as her, you know, taking jabs at Nicki Minaj, you know, she's done that before. Um, I didn't like when she got on social media, Azalea, that is, and said that, you know, Child Protective Services needs to be called on Nicki. I, I, that, that's not funny to me. I didn't find that funny at all because there are some people who take things seriously like that. And what if they did show up to her house? You know, granted, yes, she's Nicki Minaj, but at the end of the day, some of these workers, they have a job to do and they, they take their job seriously. So if there's a concern, you don't know if people who dislike Nicki Minaj so much, so wanted to follow what Azalea Banks said and made phone calls. And I just, that right there was doing way too much. I think, I think that was doing a little bit too much, but those were her opinions, but I just feel like she could have kept that. Uh, but what she said, the last part of what she said about, you know, you getting popped after uh, alleging that you got popped after a drunken night is not comparable to what happened to um, Breonna Taylor. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Wholeheartedly agree. What do you think? Listen, Azalea, when she ready, she makes some sense now. She makes some sense when she's ready. Drop down in the comments and let me know how you feel about it. All right, let me know. All right, who we got up next? Ooh, we getting through these topics already. Pushaisty is not my dog. <laughs> so the New York Post reported that rapper Pushaisty was arrested in none other than a Miami strip club it always goes it's always something in florida there's always some shenanigans and some foolishness goings on so poo shiesty he was arrested in uh a miami strip club apparently <sighs> he had his hearing recently and um i'm gonna show that in a minute let me pull up this article look at him how old is this kid this is according to the New York Post, right? So rapper Pooh Shiesty was charged in connection with a Memorial Day weekend situation at a Miami strip club. The tw he's 21? The 21-year-old recording artist, whose real name is Lontrell Williams, alleg allegedly popped a club security guard in the leg, according to an arrest warrant, the Miami Herald reports. The rapper was booked on aggravated battery uh, on an aggravated battery charge Tuesday. This is according to the local jail records. Now, Pushaisty he turned himself in after footage of the May 30th incident at the King of Diamonds Club surfaced on social media. In the clip, the narrator claims that someone robbed the rapper before patrons are seen scattering amid reported gunshots. Shiesty was allegedly robbed of $40,000 while performing at the club, according to Hot 97. In, uh, it's the second time in less than a year the Tennessee native has been arrested in connection with a Florida shooting. Oh, my word. Florida just don't give a F, right? Like, y'all they people just be doing whatever the heck they want to do. I don't know. The atmosphere just, for some reason, causes people to just be... 
dumb. I call it the dumb shine, the dumb shine state. In October, the rapper was arrested on charges of armed robbery with a firearm, aggravated battery, and theft during a parking lot cash exchange for a McLaren luxury car rental, Air Jordan sneakers, and marijuana that left two men popped. According to Fox 7 News, he reportedly pleaded not guilty in that case and was out on bond at the time of the strip club shooting. Again, that's according to the New York Post. So while I was being nosy, I reposted this. This came from It's On Site on Inst- right here on Instagram. They posted Pooh Shiesty's lawyer uh, argues that he didn't intend to pop the club worker in a court hearing. (sighs) This is about three minutes and 47 seconds long, but take a listen, y'all. It's worth listening to. And then I'll share my thoughts afterwards. Like to hear it? Here you go. Okay, I've had a chance to review the arrest warrant. Any argument, counsel? Yes, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Judge, if you notice in the in the um, in the police report or the A form, uh, it, it it definitely isn't probable cause, in my opinion, for um, aggravated battery with the firearm. There's no intent shown in that in that document. Um, there's no words that were said. There's no pointing of the firearm at anyone. Essentially, what the document says and what the witnesses said on that day um, is that. The uh, the defendant was being escorted out of the club. He reached for his pockets, looking for money in his pockets. Um, a weapon was pulled, and it was fired at the ground. And after it was fired at the ground, allegedly the ricochet or whatever happened was um, one of the either security guards or um, an employee of the club was was struck in in, in, in his ankle. Uh, certainly, it doesn't show up any intent to uh, injure that individual. I think it is a. It looks to me like an accidental discharge, but even if we stepped it up from an accidental discharge and said it was some sort of reckless discharge, uh, it still wouldn't um, have the probable cause to charge him with an aggravated battery uh, with a firearm. There's no witness that says. Uh, e- at least even even a word that the individual would say, you know, like, hey, I'm about to do something or something to demonstrate some kind of intent other than uh, an accidental discharge. It doesn't appear that there was uh, that there was anything that would have uh, prompted uh, some sort of intent from the uh, from the defendant. Okay. Um, all right, so let me hear from the state. Judge, the state disagrees with, with that version of the facts. I mean, this is pretty clear from the arrest warrant. What happened here was the defendant was angry uh, because the victim in this case, who was a, a security guard, told him to put away his gun. He then grew angry. He pointed the gun at him and shot him. The victim this specifically states in the arrest warrant that he had to move out of the way. He, he was directly shooting at him. Uh, the only reason he got shot in the ankle was because he jumped out of the way at the last minute. Uh, this happened in front of a club full of people. There's video of the defendant with the gun in his hand. He has a prior uh, pending open case right now where he's also with a gun and two people were shot. Uh, so, Judge, we're going to be asking for no bond on this. And, Judge, I'm not, Judge if I may, I'm not sure if you're reading the, the narrative from when the first police officer went out and took statements. Um, but the first police officer that went out and took statements, it clearly says that he shot into the ground. Um, there's nothing in the first statement that says anything about uh, that um, he pointed it at anyone. Um, and I don't know what the follow-up is, because all we have is the narrative, the police report narrative, uh, that specifically says um, that there was something uh, about money that fell out of his pants and there was a witness his name uh i won't mention his name but he advised security staff that he escorted the individual out um and the individual had a firearm out and shot towards the ground um that's what the 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 independent witness paid yeah judge this is Sam zane on behalf of mr williams uh two points all right so you heard that 
Let me tell you what stuck out to me, right? When he said that the only, the security guard allegedly only got popped in the ankle or because he jumped out of the way at the last minute. So I said, I typed this. I said, who the hell did Pooh Shiesty allegedly pop? Kangaroo Jack? Like how high did that security guard have to jump to be popped in the leg? That doesn't make any sense. So he jumped out of the way. Like, did he do like a, a action Jackson, like a MacGyver type? What? Pooh Shiesty, you're going to jail. No, I'm kidding. Hopefully, I, I don't know. Th these people need to stop with this. If this is true and he was uh, allegedly robbed, things probably just got, he probably was drunk, was high. I mean, he should st still be reprimanded, even if it's an accidental discharge. And someone commented on the post, you know, how did he even get into the club with that thing on him? You got security there, so security didn't search you? Or did you probably pay security a couple of, you know, a couple of hundred dollars to let you slide on through in the club with that thing on you? So, I mean, he could have killed that man. So, I don't know. Just reckless. Pooh Shiesty is 21? Yo, these kids be getting themselves into so much trouble before they 30. Does he look 21 to y'all? I don't know why that matters to me, but I'm just saying. He's so young. You're only 21. Can he even legally rent a car? He probably can. He got money. Cash is king, they say, right? Well, good luck to Pooh Shiesty. And yeah, thank God that he didn't end up in a, in a uh, you know, it wasn't a fatal situation. Child, speaking of legal troubles, we're coming to an end, coming to the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. But before I go, an update on Silento. The judge denies his bond, says that you're a huge risk to the community. Look at Silento. Lord, this is according to TMZ. Watch me whip, watch me nay nay. So Silento's not getting out of jail, at least not for now. A judge just denied his request to be let out on bond in his M word case. Yikes. The watch me whip, watch me nay nay rapper had a bond hearing Wednesday in the Caleb County. Oh, is it the Cab County? The Caleb? Anyway, it's in Georgia. This is where the judge ruled that Silento's history of mental health issues coupled with a history of not taking his meds made him too risky to be let out on bond while his case is pending. The judge also cited concerns raised by the prosecutor about Silento's history of being in denial of his mental health issues, specifically noting that the rapper once left a mental health facility in California. The judge also mentioned that there was no telling what could happen if Silento decides not to take his meds, noting this would, be, this would put the community at serious risk. I don't disagree. Prosecutor said... Even his grandparents argued in strong opposition to the bond. Silento's legal team tried painting a more favorable picture, calling him a local treasure who was once on the governor's blue ribbon panel, urging kids to stay away from drugs and alcohol. His team says Silento's problems stem from his bipolar disorder and other mental health issues he's battled for years. But the judge didn't go for it and ordered Silento to remain behind bars. TMZ broke the story. Silento requested to be let out on a $25,000 bond and assured the judge that he wouldn't be a flight risk. He was arrested in February and charged with felony M word for his alleged role in the passing of his cousin, Frederick Rooks. If he has mental health issues, then why isn't he receiving any mental health help? Um, he's tossed what in jail? And is he getting any sort of assistance? Uh, again, as far as taking his medication, I mean, there's nothing that anyone can do about it. You know, they can't force him to take his medication. But is he receiving any sort of treatment? That's the question. That would be interesting to find out. Oh, man, it's so sad to see, like, you know, just anybody, especially young people, battle with so much. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, now, don't get me wrong, some people are really, you know, they know what they're doing. It has nothing to do with a disorder or anything like that per se. And some people are just sick in a sense where they like to see things like this. But if he has, a, I mean, I don't even know. This is sad. Why did I pick this to end on? on, right? Let me find something else. I don't know. 
his family knows that he's not well and they're against him being out on bond as well. So I, I that says a lot. And him being in denial about his uh mental health. That's sad. Absolutely sad. I'm gonna try to end on something different. I wanted to talk about this. Girl, all this music coming out on Friday. What is so special about June 11? So, again, the Migos is dropping their album Culture 3. Type S-H-I-T is the name of the song featuring Cardi B. Need to know Doja Cat. I think Do- I don't know if Doja Cat is coming. I think she's coming out with a, uh, I don't know if it's an album or an EP mixtape. You know, there's a, there's a difference between those, right? So Doja Cat's coming out. Dream Doll is coming out, girl, with a song called Tryouts. Thought-ish. Megan Thee Stallion, a single uh, for the love of New York, Polo G featuring Nicki Minaj. Now that is going to be on Polo G's album, right? Um, Nicki Minaj is on one of the featured on one of the songs on Polo G's album. Polo G has had a huge amount of success. His mother is now the manager of Asian Doll, um, and his mother is very very supportive. So Polo G was on the charts a lot put it that way uh at one point he had the number i think he's i don't know if he still does but at one point he had the number one song in the world his mother was just so proud of him uh he was recently out in chicago handing out money to the kids people were complaining like why you ain't in the ghetto in the rough part of chicago listen it is what it is you know he can choose to hand out money wherever the heck he wants so uh french montana is supposed to be coming out with a single with with music who who else what else is also happening on june 11 child uh the aarp uh fight of the century uh rich dollars is supposed to be hosting this so this is about to be celebrity a bootleg celebrity boxing match um <laughs> a live pay-per-view event y'all paying for this peter guns and cisco rosado from the creep squad Special guest referee, Rich Dollars. So Lamar Odom is going to be um, fighting Aaron Carter. And it's going to be hosted by Ice-T and his bottom girl. Let me not say bottom girl. That's his wife, right? Coco. I was going to say bottom B. But anyway, that's what he calls her. Look, that's what she calls herself too. So Peter Guns and Cisco. Girl, this is about to be a hot mess, okay? Have you guys been watching the promotion for this foolishness? A mess, okay? Are you going to be watching pay-per-view? After what just happened with Floyd Mayweather, I don't think anybody is going to be paying for any fights, especially this. But, yeah, I'm curious to see if Lamar Odom is going to be Aaron Carter because Wendy Williams was saying that she thinks that Aaron Carter is going to you know, beat Lamar Odom. And Lamar Odom was like, really, Wendy? So we shall see. I'm pretty sure I'll hear about it. I ain't paying for this. Absolutely not. I have music to listen to on June 11th. This is going down, I think, it's going to be somewhere in New Jersey, I think. Because they were in, yeah, in Atlantic City. This is going to be taking place in Atlantic City. Shout out to Atlantic City. They're definitely going to be making some money because it's going to be a lot of people uh, there showing up and showing out. All right, royal family, we've come to the end of the road of the morning boogie morning show, that is. If you came in late, you could always go back and catch the replay, all right? I want to thank each and every one of you for your participation in today's show. You make the show great, okay? Don't forget before you depart to please pay your admission fee by pressing the thumbs up button, okay? Hitting that like button. That's your admission fee. That's it. That's all. It's free. Costs you absolutely nothing. Share the video. Sharing is caring. I definitely don't mind. So I'm signing off. Make sure you have your notifications on. If not, come back and check out the channel if you were new here. Uh, I will have my sister's review up later on today. I still got to get out growing up hip hop. Listen, bear with me, y'all. It takes me a while to get through growing up hip hop because I, I paused it. You know, I DVR it. I pause it. I try to take my notes. Then I get distracted. Then I get tired. I be like, I ain't doing this no more. I'm over it. This show is annoying because Pep is really getting on my nerves. So I'm signing off, but I will be back soon. And as always, until next time, folks, peace out.